Alright guys, today we're going to look at section 4.2, which is the unit circle. And everybody should have gotten this unit circle printout yesterday, so you are going to need to get that out for today's lesson. Okay, we're going to go over the six trig functions for pre-calc. So, if we're looking at the point x, y on our trig function graph, then we know that sine of some number is going to be always be our y value. And we know that cosine of some number is always going to be our x value at that point. We also know that tangent is always y over x. Cosecant is 1 over y. Cosecant is the inverse of sine. Secant is 1 over x, which is the inverse of cosine. And cotangent is x over y, which is the inverse of tangent. All right, so if everybody's got those down, let's go ahead and look at our first example. We're going to find our six trig functions for the point pi over 6. So if we look at our unit circle and we find pi over 6, we know that our x, y value at pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So my first trig function is sine, so sine of pi over 6. And we said that sine always equals our y value. So in this case, our y value is 1 half. So sine of pi over 6 would equal 1 half. If I go and do cosine of pi over 6, cosine is always our x value, and our x value in this case is square root of 3 over 2. If I look at my tangent value, tangent of pi over 6 is equal to y, which is 1 half over x, which is square root of 3 over 2, which we can then simplify by saying that we're going to leave the 1 half, we're going to change that division and multiplication, and we're going to flip our fraction so we get 2 over the square root of 3. Then our 2's cross cancels, so this ends up being 1 over the square root of 3. So tangent is 1 over the square root of 3. My next value was cosecant. So cosecant, which is the inverse of sine, is 1 over y. So 1 over 1 half. Okay, we'll leave it, change it, flip it to 2 over 1. So cosecant of pi over 6 is just 2. The next value was secant. So secant of pi over 6 and secant is your inverse of cosine. So we're going to do 1 over my cosine, my x value, which is the square root of 3 over 2. We leave it, change it, flip it. Then I know that secant is just 2 over the square root of 3. And then lastly, cotangent of pi over 6 is x over y, so the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2. I won't leave the first one. Change your division and multiplication. Flip your second one. So this just ends up being the square root of 3. Okay, so you always look at your x, y value, and then you evaluate based on your six trig functions. So let's do the same thing for 5 pi over 4. If we look at our x, y value at 5 pi over 4, our x, y value is negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. So this one should be a little easier because our x and y's are the same. So if I start with sine, sine of 5 pi over 4 is equal to my y value. And my y value is negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 5 pi over 4 is equal to my x value. And my x value is also negative square root of 2 over 2. 
tangent of 5 pi over 4 is equal to my x, or I'm sorry, my y over my x. So negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Uh, cosecant of 5 pi over 4 is equal to 1 over y, so 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2. Leave it, change it, flip it. I end up with negative 2 over the square root of 2. Secant, which is equal to the inverse of cosecant, is the same thing, 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to negative 2 over the square root of 2. And lastly, cotangent of 5 pi over 4 is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So your tangent and your cotangent in this case are the same. All right, let's do one more where we look at zero. Okay, so when t is equal to zero, if we find zero in our unit circle, then we see that our point at that is one zero. So if I go to find my sine of zero, my sine of zero is my y value, so sine of zero is zero. If I go to find cosine of zero, cosine of zero is x, so cosine of zero is one. If I go to find my tangent of 0, tangent is y over x, so 0 over 1, which is just equal to 0. Cosecant of 0, which is the inverse of sine, is just 1 over my y value, so 1 over 0. We can't divide by 0, so we call that one undefined. When you end up with 0 on your denominator, then it's undefined. If I go with secant of 0, that's going to be 1 over x, so 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And then lastly, cotangent of 0, which is x over y, which again, you can't divide by 0, so this one is undefined. Okay, so that's how we do those. The next thing we're going to look at is domain range and period of sine. Okay, so your domain for sine and cosine is always all real numbers. Your range is always negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. So your range is always in between negative 1 and 1. And your period is always 2 pi. Okay, and we use this period to help us evaluate trig functions of larger numbers. So if we're given 13 pi over 6, we want to find our sine and our cosine of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this 13 over 6. So if I divide by 6, then I end up with 2 and 1 pi over 6, not over 2, over 6. Okay, so this is like 2 pi and then 1 pi over 6. And we can ignore the 2 pi because the 2 pi is our period. And so that means that it repeats every 2 pi. So 2 pi and 1 over 6 is the same thing as just pi over 6. Okay, so all I did was reduce it and ignore the 2 pi. So that tells me that I'm going to find my sine of pi over 6. And I'm going to find my cosine of pi over 6. Well, my xy value at pi over 6 on my unit circle is the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. So then I know if sine is equal to my y value, then sine of pi over 6 again is going to be 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is my x value, so square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so if I do the same thing here, then I end up with, if I reduce, I end up with negative 3 pi and then 1 pi 
over 2, because 2 goes into 7 negative 3 times. Okay, so this is like having a negative 1 left over also. So then if I know that my period is every 2 pi, then if I add 2 pi to that, then I end up getting negative pi and 1 pi over 2, which then is the same thing as negative 3 pi halves. So that's as much as I can reduce that. Okay, and negative 3 pi halves isn't going to be on your unit circle, so we need to make that be a positive pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi back to that, which is the same thing as adding 4 pi over 2. So then negative 3 plus 4 gives me 1 pi over 2. So negative 3 halves pi is the same thing as 1 pi over 2. And so then I know that my x value at 1 half pi is going to be 0 and 1. So those are going to be the values that I'm going to find. So sine of pi halves is the same thing as my y value. And my y value in this case is 1. Cosine of pi halves is the same thing as my x value. And my x value in this case is 0. Okay, so let's do one more of those. So if I reduce this 9 thirds, and I end up with 3 pi. So I know that I can take away a 2 pi from that, because that will be the same as taking away one of my periods, which gives me just 1 pi. So I'm going to find my values at 1 pi. So if I look for pi, I see that my values, my x-y values are negative 1 and 0. So I know that sine of pi is the same thing as my y value, which in this case is 0. I know that cosine of pi is the same thing as my x value, which in this case is negative 1. Okay, so you guys are going to be evaluating our six trig functions at their various locations on your unit circle. You need to get very comfortable with your unit circle because we're going to do a unit circle project here in a couple of days. Your assignments, page 297, 5 through 16, 27 through 42. We are going to work on that both today and tomorrow, so don't worry if you don't get it finished today.